First of all, I want to say good morning and happy Easter to everyone. It looks so beautiful today. I'm so glad that you have chosen to worship with us here at Real Hope Church. If you are joining us on Facebook Live, we didn't forget about you. We're glad that you would tune in today. And Real Hope Church family wishes you and your family a very happy Easter as well. Easter, the Resurrection Sunday. It is so special because it is a time when we remember and we celebrate something very miraculous that Jesus did for you and for me when he willingly chose to go to the cross and die on the cross to give you a hope and to give me a hope for forgiveness of our sins and eternal life. Why? Why would he do that? This morning as I woke up and I was overcome with emotion, thinking about the love that Jesus had that moved him to do what he did on your behalf and on my behalf. But the Bible says that he did it in order to pay the price for our sin, for my sin and for your sin, and to give you and me absolutely free, absolutely free, the hope of eternal life. Do you know it's true that you cannot purchase hope? Hope is not for sale. I know there's many people who kind of wish that it was, but hope is not for sale. And we're going to see that not only the hope that we have in Jesus, but there's so much more hope that we're going to unpack in the Word of God. So if you have your Bibles Uh, We're going to look in, we're going to pick up at Romans 6.23. But the very first real hope that we have is in in Jesus' resurrection is the hope of salvation. Hope of salvation. By the way, if you have any kids, we do have children's ministry now, and they're doing a lot of fun stuff. So if you want to join, the kids' ministry is right to the back. Lori will be there, uh, and she has all kinds of good and fun things for you to do. So you'll want to make your way back there. I forgot to announce that, and Lori's waiting on the kids. So, But the, the first thing that gives us real hope in the resurrection of Jesus is the hope of salvation. Salvation from what? salvation from sin and salvation from death the wages of sin required death required a death but because Jesus chose to be the one to die for us then you and I now have this opportunity to obtain that free gift by giving Jesus all of our sin and and he took it upon himself to pay the price for our sin to offer us through his shed blood forgiveness for our sins and that gave us salvation but then it goes further he decided that that he would conquer death once and for all and that when we are raised with Christ as the resurrection we ourselves conquer death once and for all that doesn't mean you're not gonna die we are gonna die but it just means that we have life eternal life everlasting with Jesus because of what he did on the cross look at Romans six twenty three. it says for the wages of sin is death But the free gift of God is eternal life through who? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The way you come to believe and to have a relationship with Jesus, because it's it's a relationship with you that he wants. That's what he wants from you, is he wants a relationship with you. And the way to do this is to know it in your heart, to believe it in your heart, to have faith. Now, why do I say that? I say that because of this. You were not physically at the crucifixion or the resurrection. I was not physically at the crucifixion or the resurrection, but we were there spiritually because we were on the mind and heart of Christ to do what he did. See, I have chosen for myself to believe in God because the deepest part of me The deepest part of my soul knows that nothing, not even the very breath of life, makes sense to me apart from God, from a divine creator. Who is this creator? He's your creator. He's my creator. A little bit of of trivia for you here. 
How many breaths do you think you take in a 24-hour period? How many times do you breathe? Ever thought about that? It's not something we normally think about, right? Because it's, it's just, it's, it's too big to think about that. And the truth is, if we're honest with ourselves, we kind of take every breath for granted until we're struggling with our lungs and then we can't breathe. Then absolutely we're not taking a single breath for granted because every single breath at that point becomes precious. But here's the roundabout number to that. Biologist tells us that on average, the average person takes in about 23,040 breaths a day, which translates into a whopping 8,409,600 thereabouts breaths a year. Now keep in mind this particular number, I'm sure it's not down to an exact science, it's just a guesstimate kind of thing based on them, you know, checking. But this doesn't account for people that do strenuous exercise because that number would go up exponentially. But why do I share this with you about breath? Because every breath you take is a gift from the God Almighty, from the God of the universe. We owe it to the oxygen that he placed in the air along with every other perfect thing that we need to sustain every breath that we take. So what does that mean? It means that every breath you take speaks to the goodness of God. Ever thought about that? And so it only makes sense that he would desire his very best for his creation. That's you. And get this, of all the galaxies, of all the universe, of all the things, all the beautiful flowers you've ever seen, everything, every mountain, every ocean, everything you've ever seen in your life that is majestic, he created those things for our pleasure and enjoyment to look at and to awe at his creation, but he created you in his image. That's how special you are to God. And so it makes sense that he indeed would want to rescue us from sin. So he sent his son Jesus to do just that, and that's what Jesus did. And that's, just as Gustav read, that's exactly where our real hope for living begins. This is where we find living hope. Not just any hope, living hope. Look at that scripture in 1 Peter that Gustav read again. It was the Lord's mercy that gave us this living hope. But how did we get it? It came through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Folks, that's great news for today. That's what makes Easter so amazing. And even the crucifixion, as gory and terrible and painful and dark as it was, it birthed victory and it birthed over sin and over death for us. And that was God's plan all along. So the resurrection is great news because it's our living hope. So if we have this living hope according to the word, Let's try to understand a little bit more about this living hope. Let's explore it, because I feel pretty certain that you need more hope in life. I know I need more hope in life. So let's look at this together, because what we really don't want to happen in our lives is for God to have all these wonderful promises for us that we know nothing about. Every day we wake up, and what we don't know hurts us. What we know can help us. So let's explore this. Because hope is a very important thing. See, sometimes in life, our hope is shaken. Sometimes we're devoid of hope. Sometimes we're empty of hope, whether we choose to tell somebody or not. Or sometimes we're afraid to hope. Ever been there? Afraid to, to hope for something? Dashed hopes? Or sometimes we are angry because we did hope. We poured all our marbles into this one basket of something we were hoping for that didn't come to pass. And what do we do with that? Where do we put that in our lives? We need hope. And we don't need temporary hope. That, the kind that, that fades whenever there's something rough or, or a storm comes into our life. No, we need real, lasting, living, like the Word of God calls it, hope. Because that's the difference between the hope that Jesus gives us and the hope that the world will try to give us. That's the difference. The resurrection proved once and for all that hope was not dead. Hope rose again 
and it's alive. And this time, we live forever with Christ. Look at Colossians 1.27. It says that Christ in us is the hope of glory. If you don't have Christ in you, it's fairly a good chance you're not going to experience this living hope that we're talking about because that's what the resurrection secured for you and me. The second thing is this. Real hope in Jesus' resurrection is the hope of heaven and eternal life. We all going to have an eternal life. You just got to know where you're, we're going to spend that time. And that's your choice. You know, I, I love that God is such a gentleman. He would give us choices that he wants us to make. But many people, when they think about eternal life, when they think about death, when they think about dying, people are afraid to die. I have found that there's a lot more people that are really strongly rooted in the faith and the word of God that are not afraid to die. Okay, I know this because, and Nathan's smiling because he knows it too. He's a chaplain of hospice. I was a chaplain of hospice for 10 years. I can't tell you how many times I sat and had that conversation with people. And it was almost so, you could just tell, when they were strongly in Christ, they were never afraid to die. But if they weren't sure and there was not peace in their soul, they were afraid. <laughs> and they were afraid. And then we got to talk through that. But why are we afraid? And I think it's because we feel, we feel as people, but there's just so many unknowns about death. That's why I'm scared of it. You know, like, does it hurt or does it whatever? I mean, they're just afraid of what they don't understand. And so because of that, we don't like to talk about death. Let's not talk about it. Let's just kind of, you know, I don't want to, it's morbid. You know, I don't want to talk about that. But here's what I want to tell you. If you're a child of the living king, then there is no unknown <laughs> when it comes to heaven and to eternal life because the Bible speaks absolutely very clearly about the realities of heaven and about eternal life for those of us who have chosen to believe. You need the hope of heaven. I need the hope of heaven. I need to know there's something greater than all of this, and you do too. We need to know that this is not all he wrote that there's something much greater, and there is, and that's the joy. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 1. It says, For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a new house, where? In heaven. An eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. So the real hope of heaven is in the word of God. There's no guesswork. It's completely plain. It's completely clear. Real hope is in heaven. Real, that he created that for you and I to spend eternity with him when we give our lives to him. When he was, he knew he was going to be uh, crucified, Jesus. And his disciples were trying to figure so many things out because they're just not, there's so much they didn't understand about what was going to happen until it all happened. But he told his disciples this, Jesus, these are red letter words. In other words, these come from Jesus' mouth. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. There's other versions that say, trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. Some versions say many mansions. He's talking about heaven. It's clear. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, then I will come again and take you to myself. And what's the purpose? That where I am, there you may be also. See, he wants relationship. He wants a relationship that is eternal with you and with me. So there's hope for us to believe and trust in God about heaven and about everlasting life. The third one is this. We find real hope in Jesus' resurrection because it's the hope of God's everlasting love. This is my favorite part. If you don't listen to anything else, please listen to this. Jeremiah 31 Three, God speaks and he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. The truth is God cannot love you any more or any less than he loves you right now. And it doesn't matter what you've ever done. It doesn't matter what you're currently doing now. 
the real hope that we have is found in God's and in Jesus' unconditional love for you and me. This one's a hard one for us to wrap our minds around because people can be finicky. But God loves us unconditionally. Now you say, well, Pastor Cindy, you don't know me. I mean, you don't know all the things that I've, I've done. Well, God does. And he still wants an intimate relationship with you very badly. That's what he wants. Look at Romans 5, 8. It says, when we're talking about Jesus going to the cross and giving his life, it says, but God showed his love. No, it says God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were yet sinners. What does this mean? It means that God didn't wait until you were worthy to send Jesus to give his son for you. He didn't wait till we had our act all together. Then we were worthy of going to the cross for. No. He bled and died while we were yet sinners to give us a way to conquer sin. And I think about that. In his great mercy, in his love, it was far too big for that. He loved us too much to wait. And so he wanted to make a way. You've heard it. For God so loved the world. For God so loved you. For God so loved. You know what that means? You're so loved by God. How does that make you feel? What is our response to such love? So before we go into our very last takeaway, I want you to be sure you understand the Father's love for you. These next words that I'm about to read are not mine. They come from the Word of God. Ephesians 3, 18, 19, it says, And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. Ah, but look at this. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. That's living hope. That's living hope every day. And if your soul needs a little bit more assurance, then let's go to Romans 8. It says, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? Stop right here. The word of God just told us that we're going to experience these things. Trouble, calamity, persecution. We're going to be hungry at times. Destitute. We will be in danger. We will be threatened with death. Why do I say that? Because so many people are hung up. Well, God's not a good God when all these things happen to me. But the Bible is clear. These things happen. But then let's go on to see what it says. So does it mean that God doesn't love us when these things happen? No. Instead, it says, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through who? Christ, who did what? loved us, and I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell itself can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky nor in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. But we must believe in Jesus in order to secure that, that, that we love him too, that we have chosen to receive this amazing love that he died to give us. I don't know about you, but that's as plain as day. No guesswork in the Word of God. It is very, very plain. He has an unconditional, unyielding love for you, and nothing can come against the love that he has for you. And lastly, this. We have the hope of power and peace. The hope of power and peace. Let's face it. There are times in life when I feel pretty powerless. How about you? And, I, and it, it erodes my peace. Sometimes maybe you can't sleep at night, uh, maybe uh, you have anxiety, worry, stress, 
fatigue, you wonder why you're tired of the battle all the time, disillusionment, depression, so on and so on. And at times we put all our hope in the wrong places. Or sometimes we put all our hope in the wrong people instead of focusing and looking to God and placing our hope on Him. And then we don't understand why things are happening the way they do. But it's because Jesus is our source for power, and that gives us peace. Look what Ephesians 1.18 says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance for in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who do what? Believe. That power is the same. This, this gets crazy. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. You've inherited as a child of God when you choose to become a child of God this power. We become heirs. Now keep in mind here that when we talk about this, this power is not for self-gratification or selfish ambition or a power to hurt and wield others to get our own way. That's not power that comes from God. <laughs> that comes from somewhere else. It doesn't come from God. Because the power that God gives us is for having the living hope in our lives here on earth. And that power brings us peace. It's the power to overcome darkness in the dark places of our lives. It's the power to overcome sin in our lives instead of, instead of allowing sin to overcome our lives. That's the power. It's the power to live victoriously even though the enemy comes at us and tries to attack us and defeat us. He can't. It's the victory of Jesus that's your victory as well as a child of the living king. He overcame so that you and I can overcome as well. And that's what the power of Christ is for. It is for us to live lives that bring glory and honor to God from where the power comes, from God and God alone. Whatever hope you need from this day to the next to the next, you find it in Jesus. He is your source of hope. Whatever power that you need from this day to the next to the next, you find that power in Jesus because he holds all power. He alone holds all power. Whatever peace that you need from one day to the next, maybe even from one minute to the next minute, you find that in Jesus. He's the prince of peace. He's the source of your peace. So in closing, if you have not yet decided to believe in Jesus, to trust in Jesus with your heart and to give him your life, then today, Easter 2022, is a beautiful day to do that because you can walk out of here with a hope like you've never known because it's not just any hope, it's a supernatural hope that comes from Jesus. And so if you feel like today is the day you want to receive Jesus in your life, I'm going to lead us now in a prayer, a real simple prayer, and you can just... Echo it in your heart and in your spirit. I'm not going to ask anybody to come forward. This is between you and God. This is your moment with him. He just wants a relationship with you. He wants you to want that with him too. Then I want us to pray that prayer together this morning. Let us bow our heads. Dear Jesus, today I choose to believe and trust in you. Help me to grow in my relationship with you. Teach me from your word. Lead me in your ways. And may I follow you all of the days of my life. May I live a surrendered life before you, today and always. Amen. Amen. I want to close with this. The mission of Real Hope Church is so simple. I tell people even a 10-year-old could do it. We're just here to know Christ to grow in Christ together, and then to take the love of Christ out to the world. 
If you don't have a home church, we hope this will be the one for you. And I want to invite you because starting next Sunday, we're going to start a whole new series called Real Hope for Living. And we're going to be talking about real hope in marriages, real hope in parenting, real hope in your finances, real hope for your relationships, and real hope for your careers. These are going to be things that will bless you in every season of your life or somebody you know. So please make sure to get here. We serve a good God. Let's serve him with all that we are. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask everyone to come up.